Uh, let's turn to Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Today we'll be engaging in character study. Character study. And we'll be studying about a woman. Not only a woman, but a great woman, as what the Bible says. And we'll be studying about the great woman of Shunem. So 2 Kings chapter 4. And we'll look at one verse. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. And it fell on a day that Elisha, not Elijah, passed to Shunem, where was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned and thither to eat bread. So as we know in the Bible, this is the only woman in the whole entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation who is referred as a great woman. The Catholic Church might consider Mary as a great woman. They consider her as the mother of God. They consider her as the queen of heaven. But the Bible never mentions about Mary as being a great woman. There's only one great woman, and it's this person in 2 Kings chapter 4. And we don't even know her name. The Bible doesn't mention her name. Only thing we know is that she is great. Throughout history, the world has named certain people or added the title the Great. Charlemagne the Great, Frederick the Great, Pepin the Great. And there are other people who's, who ask great or king or queen after their names. But that's all for not if God doesn't consider that person great. Yeah. Greatness mentioned in the Bible has nothing to do with the greatness or the greatness standard that is according to the world. Yeah. If God mentions something great, then it's of significance. Mm -hmm. However, the world might say something is great, but God doesn't say anything about it, then probably it isn't that great. Mm -hmm. So a question to you is, can God consider you a great person? Yeah. God certainly did for this woman. And there's a person, specific title, a friend of God. And that person is Abraham. And there's another person who is after God's own heart. And that person is David. What can God say about you? What kind of title can he give you? And there are other people in the Bible, we don't know by name, but God knows. And God put those people, characters in the Bible, and they're of significance. For example, the feeding of the 5,000. There's a young lad. It seemed like he, he had a big appetite, right? <laughs> he had five barley loaves five barley loaves, and he had two fish, right? And then what did he do? He gave all that he had to the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did the Lord Jesus Christ do with those things? Yeah. Insignificant things. He was able to feed 5,000 plus. And another one is, you guys know the cult. You know the cult, uh, the one that Jesus Christ rode to enter into Jerusalem. So, there had to be an owner of the cult, right? Like those kind of things. God knows, even though the Bible doesn't explicitly mention about that person who gave the cult to the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, he could be the one. You know that cult? That was my cult that I yeah. gave up to Jesus Christ. That's right. Heaven will know. Heaven knows. Heaven knows. As one soul that gets saved or one soul that repents, only some people might know this on earth, but heaven and the angels, all the hosts, know Amen. when a soul yes. repentance or, or gets saved. And just because you 
you think you're of insignificance, you don't stand up, doesn't mean that you're not significant in the sight of God. Yeah. If you read the Bible, if you pray, if you try to win social mm -hmm. virtues, cry with all of your heart, that God notices. Yeah. Right? And this person, woman of great woman of Shuna, she's one of them. The world would never uh, recognize her. The world would never put out a parade for her. But there's nothing better than God commanding or complimenting a person by having that person be written in the Bible. Amen. So let's look at what made her great. What made her great? So number one, let's look at verse nine. Verse nine. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. So first thing is that she had spiritual discernment. She was able to distinguish between a fake, a fraud, and a man of God. Unfortunately, today, there are too many fakes, yeah. too many frauds, too many scammers, yeah. and not too many truthful people. And especially, Bible-believing preachers are few, very, very few. But praise the Lord that we have two pastors here who believe the King James Bible is the Word of God, same doctrine, same fellowship. It's just wonderful. So we need to thank God for that. But one of the things here is that she perceived that this is a holy man of God. She was not deceived. She was not deceived. Unfortunately, there are too many people, not only people, but saved Christians who are deceived by the false prophets or by false preachers yeah. or robbers. Yeah. Paul Crouch. Mm. Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. Benny Hinn. Yeah. Yonggi Cho. Yeah. And all these false prophets. But unfortunately, people are deceived. <clears throat> and not only people, as I mentioned, saved people are deceived. So you need to be careful. I know some of you are very into YouTube videos. I recommend. First, you always watch Pastor Kim, Pastor Shrine, and Pastor Jim Kim's first, and then you watch others, other people's uh, preachings or their teachings. First, you listen to uh, sound doctrine first, so that you won't be deceived. And unfortunately, in Book of Genesis, we have Eve. She was deceived by the devil and she ate up the fruit and you know what happened afterwards and we are in the condition that we're in right now because of that event so if she had spiritual discernment what do you think she should have done she should have right when satan approached her she should have gone to adam her husband and told her hey honey there's someone that is talking to me can you, can you check this person out? Yeah. But she didn't do it, and what happens? Yeah. Right. Catastrophe, right? Because she didn't have discernment. And also Joel's wife. Joel's wife. Joel was going through tough times, right? He lost everything, literally everything. Even his health, he lost his health. And there could have been one person who could have encouraged him, comforted him. But that last person, what did she say? She said, curse God and die. Yeah. <laughs> what an encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> right? But in spite of her uh, negative comments or negative Thing that she meant, she said to Job, still Job did not sin, and at the end, what did God do for Job? He blessed, he blessed him abundantly. And there's another person. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. This person somewhat had spiritual discernment, but unfortunately, this time, the man, the husband, did not listen to her. Matthew chapter 27, verse 29. This is talking about the wife of Pontius Pilate. 
when he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. That should have been the clincher for Pilate to release Jesus Christ. We know from scripture that Jesus Christ had to be nailed to the cross. We knew he had to die. But he didn't have to be the person that gave Jesus Christ up to the mob. Right? But unfortunately, he didn't listen to his wife. And what happened? The following verse. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. So what happened? Barabbas was released and Jesus Christ was crucified. And, and for ladies, for sisters, continue to read the word, continue to listen to the preachings constantly so that you wouldn't be deceived. So there are so many fakes in this world, and if you are not, if you are not well rooted in the Word of God, then you will, not my, you will be deceived, because God wants to destroy you, and through you, one will want to destroy your family. So first thing is that the woman of Shunan, the great woman of Shunan, she has spiritual discernment. Yeah. Number two. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, again, 2 Kings chapter 4, let's look at verse 10, the next verse, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 10, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. So, Second thing about this great woman was that she was generous. Are you a generous person? Or are you a stingy person? First thing is when the offering plate is going past by you, what do you do? So that's one of the things. But it doesn't have to always be related to money. Uh, in our church, we are fed pretty well, right? And we thank God for the ladies, for the sisters yeah. who prepare the food. Right? Pastor Shai mentions them, and Pastor Kim mentions them. But that's a lot of work. But God knows. God knows. And this woman here, she didn't just open the doors and have Elijah just come in and that was it. She basically furnished everything so that Elijah would be able to re relax really well. And for ladies, there are many things that you could do to be generous. And generosity and being an aid or a help me, they go hand in hand. So are you a help to the church? Are you help to the family? Not just cooking food, but taking care of the kids, or being a good wife, good sister, a good grandmother. There was a boy a long time ago, probably past the cash right members, probably. Not only in New York, but other places. The newspaper, you guys know what newspaper is, you young people? <laughs> <laughs> but basically it's a print, you know, print in your newspaper. It's basically a, it's paper where there's news printed, okay? But anyways, uh, the young people, around 10 to 13 or so, they will be, they will get a stag and they will try to sell it to people. But there was a lady, a Christian lady, who saw a young man in the cold, didn't really have a jacket or bare feet, but she had compassion on that boy, and she took him to one of the, one of the stores in the mall, and then she bought him the jacket and socks and shoes, and this boy was very thankful. He was touched. So he asked her a question, and the question that he asked her was, Ma'am, are you the wife of God? Right? Because he couldn't, he, no one actually helped him, but he said her. Obviously, we know that she's not, she, she's not the wife of God, but that's how highly she, he looked upon her for helping him. And we know, know also in the Bible, Dorcas. How many guys heard yeah. the name Dorcas? 
I know some of you will not try to name your daughters Dorcas, but Dorcas is in the Bible and the Bible commands her. So what happened was that she basically made garments. She made clothes and garments for the widows in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 39. So it isn't all about money. It isn't all about preaching. It's about what you can do outside of those things. And the prime example in the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ and his generosity. Yeah. John chapter 3, verse 16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ died for all, not for the certain elect, all. That's very generous. And not only that, not only he saved us, but he keeps us saved, Amen. right? So not only was she, did she have spiritual discernment, she was generous. And number three, uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. Let's look at verse 13. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. So another characteristic of her greatness is that she was humble. The Bible said the first shall be last and the last shall be first, right? So she was humble. So Elijah for basically asked her, since you helped me, and since you provided this place for me, do you want me to talk to you on, be, on behalf of you towards the king or the nobles or any request that you have? Do you want me to go to them? And she basically just said, I dwell among my own people. Basically stayed where she, she was. She didn't, she didn't want any accolades. She didn't want any recognition. She basically had the mindset, I just did what I was supposed to do to help the man of God. What kind of attitude do you have? Anything that you do in church or outside of church, do you do it for the recognition? Do you want the person next to you, in front of you, back of you, or anywhere to recognize you? What is more important, God recognizing you or people recognizing you? It's pretty sad that people put athletes, right? Basketball players, baseball players, as heroes. <clears throat> I don't know why they're called heroes. I don't know. I mean, what they have done, they, they're making millions of dollars. I don't know why they're considered heroes. Right. Doctors, those scientists, or firefighters, or anyone else, those are heroes pretty much, right? Or pastors, they're, they are real heroes. Why? Because they look yeah. after their souls. Yeah, yeah. That's a hero right there. And Jesus Christ, our greatest hero. But you don't hear anything about those people. Yeah. But whether the world talks about them or not, the world talks about them in a negative light, it doesn't matter because Jesus recognized those people. And that's the only thing that matters. So this great woman of Shunan, she didn't want any recognition. She was humble. She said, I will just dwell among my people. You got to have that kind of a mindset. When, when, when certain situation occurs, will you compromise? Will you just compromise certain things? Or will you just be with, uh, just stick to the principles of the Word of God? She was humble. Now, another thing about her, let's look at verse 19. 19 to 21. Verse 19. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. So this great woman had, had a child. But what happened? My head, my head. Start to have headache. Or he was getting dizzy. And they carried him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Verse 21, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. So what happened was that she was able to have a, have a child, 
So we don't know how old he was at this time, but probably a young man. But while working on the field with his father, probably, he started to have a headache or <coughs> lightheadedness, dizzy, or whatever he had, maybe sunstroke. But anyways, he was sick, he was ill. So he was laid on the bed where Elijah slept. And then, uh, what a terrible thing to have your child, your only son, uh, in front of you, yeah. in front of you or next to you, or you're basically hugging the kid and then just passing away. We don't see anything in here where she complained or she acted on emotions where we don't see anything where she exploding on the man of God. She just laid the child there and then what did she do? She just went out. Where, where do you think she went? She went to see Elijah. So whenever, whenever tough times comes, self-control is needed. Ladies are more prone to uh, follow after emotions than men, in, in generally, but not all the time. But first thing, when the emotions catch up to you, you need to first get on your knees and pray. It's for everybody, everybody. Yeah. So she had what we call self-control, self-control. She had self-control. <coughs> and then she then go by feelings. She then go by feelings. And then next, another trait of her, okay, uh, let's look at verse 24, 24 and 25. Then she sat on an ass and said to her servant, drive and go forward, slack not thy writing for me, except I be thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Beyond, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. So Elijah knew who she was. But why do you think she went to see Elijah? Because she wanted to hear the words of God. So another trait, another thing that, that made her great was that she hungered for the word of God. She hungered for the word of God. She hungered for the word of God. So instead of just talking to her neighbors, instead of talking to her friends, or, and then gossiping or complaining that this person has it better than her or, or anything else, she went to Elijah to hear what he had to say from God. And that's what we also need to do. And one of the great things about ladies, even, uh, especially mothers, is that they, their love is the closest thing to God's love. I do want to mention that as well. And they really, those who are normal, Normal ladies, they're abnormal women, they're abnormal mothers, so called. But normal mothers, they'll really they'll take care of their child at all costs. They'll sacrifice everything. Uh, I remember this, you guys study the study history about the Oregon Trail and how the lady it was it was sad what happened. They pretty much didn't have food on the way and it was cold and the mothers basically uh, sacrificed themselves by cutting parts of their body off to feed the kids, feed the child, right? Because that's how much love they have for the child. These days you, you wouldn't really see that. But she hungered for the Word of God. She hungered for the Word of God. And let's turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. This is a good example. <coughs> I'm sure every one of you know Martha and Mary. And Luke chapter 10. 
verse 41 and 42. Verse 41 says, And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Martha was a hard worker. Hard worker, that was good. But there are certain times when you need to pause and you need to just calm down and do what Mary did. Verse 38. What's that good part? Verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his what? Heard his word. Certain time you just need to sit and then listen to the word of God. You got to sit and listen to the preaching. And that's what Mary did. That's what Mary did. So you need to study the word of, word of God. So the Bible wasn't just written for men, but it was written for ladies too. And ladies need to study the word of God. Even though you're not allowed to preach in front of the pulpit, still you have, you have the responsibility to teach the children. And my wife and I, we read the Bible together, and she asked me some tough questions. So... <laughs> It's a blessing. And I just tell her, I honestly don't know the answer to the question. <laughs> if I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not God. Right? So what I do, I cheat by listening to Pastor Tribe's the commentaries, and then also I, I look at the Dr. Roman's commentary as well. But sometimes, quite disappointed, the answer's not there. <laughs> what do I do? Right? I just, I just tell her, just pray, and let's see if God gives you the answer, then maybe you can teach me. Right? Yeah. But hunger for the Word of God. That's what we need. That's what we need. And let's look at a couple of verses. John chapter 6. Let's turn to John chapter 6 since we are in the New Testament. John chapter 6. Verse 35 first. John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that lives on me shall never thirst. And verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Do you want life in your Christian life? Do you want to get closer to Jesus Christ? That hunger after the words of God. Hunger after the words of God. Eat the words of God. Like Job. Or Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah. Desire the words of God. Hunger after the words of God. And as iron sharpens iron, if you have someone in your family or among the church brethren, you could discuss certain things. And that person who you uh, sharing what you learn could also get excited about a certain point. Right? So hunger after the words of God. Instead of hungering for social media, hungering after what he or she doing, what, what they're wearing, the, all this nonsense. To open the words of God and to see what the Bible says. Okay? Now, another thing. Uh, let's go back to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Now the timeline is this great woman, Shuna, she basically provided shelter, provided food, for Elijah, and then she had a kid, but unfortunately, the God took her kid, and she approached Elijah, and verse 28, verse 28, and 29. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Verse 29. 
Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. Verse 30. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. So, Elijah, so she has a dead son, but you could kind of, kind of see what's, what's going to happen, what's about to happen, the resurrection, right? And she approached Elijah, and verse 28, again, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? So her, so she's basically saying, I was going to get a son, right? And then Elijah is like, yes. Then why? Then why do I have a son anymore? Then you deceive me, right? She was very persistent. She was persistent in prayer. Persistent in prayer, you can see. Problem is, people quit too soon. If you really want something, what do you have to do? You need to work for it. You need to ask, yeah. right? The acronym ASK for prayer. Ask, seek, knock. And Book of James mentions your prayer is not being answered. Why? Not only because you're asking for the wrong things, but because you don't pray. That's the thing. Certain times, you have to be persistent with anything in life. Yeah. Anything in life. Working out. If you want to build your body, right? If you want to lose weight or whatnot, it's not going to happen one day. It has to happen day by day, daily. Daily. Do you want a lot of knowledge of the Bible? Do you want wisdom? from God, then it's not going to just happen one day. You have to read the Bible. You need to study the Bible. You need to meditate. You need to memorize the Word of God. You have to be persistent. This woman was persistent. Basically, Gehazi, so basically, Elijah basically told Gehazi, okay, Gehazi, his servant, just go and put a staff, and then he'll rise, right? But this woman didn't want that. I want you. I want you to come and then I want you to take care of this thing. So she was persistent. Michelangelo, uh, everyone knows of the Sistine Chapel. He's the main artist, to say. And when he painted the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel, there's a record that he had 2,000 uh, drawings or sketches before that was before everything was finalized for him to actually follow that blueprint, right? And as well, Brother Dave mentioned, promises of God. When things are not going well, you have to sometimes quote Bible verses to God. Yeah. God knows, God knows, but when you quote it, then what's God gonna say? No, I never said that, no. Just remind God. That's what you need to do. But in order, in order to remind God of the things that are written in the Bible, the promises, but my gosh, so far, all you need according to the reason of Christ Jesus, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Those, you have to know the verses. You can't just quote what's in your mind, right? Your own Bible verse or your own version. You gotta quote what he says in his word because God has magnified his word above his name. And God will not take lightly when you take up his words upon him. But when you do that, you gotta have faith when you do it too. You can't just quote certain verses, see God, you said this, and then you're not doing this. And I know that you're not gonna take, you're not gonna answer this prayer. If you have that kind of a mindset, God's not obligated to listen to you. But you gotta really have faith. You gotta really trust him. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Do you want to please the Lord? Yes. Have faith. 
For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligent. You gotta be diligent. Yeah. You gotta be diligent in seeking God. So do you pray? Do you pray? We know Daniel. We know David. And we know Jesus Christ. We know those three men prayed at least three times a day. And not just not just couple not just couple minute prayer or the or the food prayer. God thank you for the food, bless for your body in Jesus' name pray. No, no, no. Not not those kind of prayers. Okay, serious prayer. Right? And we know of George Mueller. We know of Dwight L. Moody. But it doesn't just have to be men. Ladies as well. Susanna Wesley. How many children did she have? A lot. A lot. I don't know if she had 20, but around close to 20, but all of them from what we know, they all grew up pretty well. And we know of two characters uh, of her children, John Wesley and Charles Wesley. How were they able to be godly people, godly men? Because uh, we, don't, we don't really know too much of their father, but the mother, Susanna Wesley, yes. The mother's love and the prayers, prayer that she had, uh, she lifted up to God for those children. Like in the time of the Civil War, there was a person who asked uh, the, a mother of five, and they were, these people were very impressed by her children. And she basically, they asked her, how were you able to raise this, your children like the way they are right now? good Christian godly man. And her reply was, I basically, I made up my mind to not to let the devil have them at all costs. That's what she said. So what do you think involved? What do you think was involved when she said that? That's pretty deep. Prayer, reading the Bible, spanking them probably, right? And just taking care of all the things they need to become such a great man. And we know another character in the Bible. Let's turn to Mark chapter 7. Gotta be persistent. Too many Christians quit. Yeah. Pastors quit too. But I know from one person that I never <laughs> blame quitting our pastors. You have no idea and I have no idea what they go through. If they quit, then we have to Blame ours, blame us that they quit because maybe because of us, right? But in Christian life, you can't quit. Too many ladies quit on their children, right? And too many men quit on the marriage or anything else, but can't quit. Gotta be persistent. And this is a great example, great example. At all odds, this is how you gotta pray. So Mark chapter 7, Jesus Christ originally did not come for the Gentiles, right? He came to seek and to save that which were lost. Those lost are the uh, house, of Israel, house of Israel. Israel. But this person, we'll look at verse 25. Mark chapter 7, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, so what do we know? She, was she a Jew? No, she was a Gentile. A Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. That's a serious stuff. Having, having, having the devil possess child. And she approached Jesus Christ. And verse 27, But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it onto the dog. So you know what Jesus Christ said to her? You're a dog. Oh, you're a dog. And I can't give I can't give the bread to you. I can't give it to the children of Israel. But verse 28. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. That's how much faith that she had. She, she admitted everything that Jesus Christ said. Yes, I'm an unworthy dog. I'm dirty. I'm a Gentile. 
I am an alien from the Commonwealth of Israel, but but I could lick or I could take up the crumbs that fall by, fall off the children's table. Yeah. And and then Jesus Christ, verse 29, and he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. Just like that. But she was persistent. She could have been discouraged and she could have complained. But she didn't do that. She persistently followed after the Lord and persistently approached him. And verse 30 says, And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. So you have to persist in prayer. You have to be persistent. So you have to continue to pray. If it's something that is not deliberately against the word of God, I wish this wasn't against the Bible. God, can you please make me a trillionaire so I could <laughs> help the church? But I don't think that's the will of God, right? But not like those kind of prayers, but real prayers. God, I'm asking you, please save this person. Say my family members, or this person, uh, I'm trying to, this person needs to get saved. And this person has so much potential. God, please use me to, to lead this person to unto you. And then you quote Bible verses God, who will have all men to be saved and to come to, and to, come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. Right? You quote those verses to God. And then God has to do something. Right? And George Mueller, I think it was George Mueller, he was able to pray for, I think, five or, or several of his friends who were really, really close, and they got saved. I think four or five or so got saved during his lifetime. But one of them or so got saved way after, uh, way sometime after he died. So what's the thing that we need to learn? Got to pray. Got to be persistent in prayer. So always got to pray. Always got to pray. So let's go back to Second Kings chapter 4, we're almost done. So she had many traits that made her what the Bible considered her as a great person. <clears throat> and look at look at verse 28 again. So then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? So she knew, she she knew that not only she was going to have a son, but he was going to live. But he died, right? So she approached Elijah to get answers. But it seemed like she went to Elijah with the word of God in her heart, knowing probably that he was going to rise from the dead already. So we could see that she claimed the promises already, right? With the limited knowledge that probably she had. And But we have the words of God. We have the words of God. So as I mentioned, you have to claim the promises. But only way you'll be able to claim the promises is by knowing the words of God. Pastor Shah always mentioned in his work, the regular minister does not know more than five verses of the Bible by heart. That's, that's very sad. I know at least one. Adam says Enos, right? First, first Chronicles chapter one. But she was but another thing that we could see is that she cling onto the promises. She cling onto the promises, having hope. She had hope. She cling onto the promises. She cling onto the promises. And then the last one, let's look at verse 37. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son. So he's alive now, right? Mm -hmm. And went out. So what did she do? She didn't just forget Elijah. She didn't forget God. After God raised her son from the dead, what did she do? She went in and fell at his feet, Elijah. She basically went to him to thank him. She was very thankful. So another trait of her being great is that she was thankful. She was appreciative of what God's done for her. 
Psalms 103 verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Benefits. All his benefits. All means all. And Bob Sr., or Bob Jones Sr. said, The heart that is dead of being thankful has no hope. Okay, if you're not a thankful person, there's no hope for you. And Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3. There are numerous verses in the Word of God of being thankful. And you are to be thankful for everything, good and bad. That's why Romans 8.28 is also in the Bible. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And by being thankful, ye should be manifested by, next verse, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and homage of one another in what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So if you're a thankful person in church, you should be able to sing with a glad heart. Yeah. If you're not a thankful person, then we can kind of know the way you sing. Yeah. You might not be the best singer, but it's what the Bible said, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Try to make a joyful noise, but noise is better than no noise, I think. So sing unto the Lord. Why? Because of all his benefits. All his benefits. And Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, we know there is a progression of people who deserve capital punishment, the sodomites. And we see the progression. And one of the huge things or the big factors that led those people into that state is what? Being unthankful. Yeah. Not worshiping God the way He is. And God gave, <clears throat> up, gave them up to a reprobate mind. But it didn't just happen in one day. It was progression. By being unthankful. By being unthankful. So you need to be thankful. You need to be thankful. So let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible doesn't on, does not only mention great man. Bible mentions of women who have who are worthy in the in God's sight, but particularly this woman of being great. And not only not only ladies, but we men also need to learn from her. And even though the Bible does not mention her name here, but we'll see her in heaven. And then We'll also be able to see her son, I think. Uh, and that is great, it should be a uh, great challenge for us. If God were to pass by this place, Ontario, or LA, or Orange County, wouldn't it be great when he said, God taking a trip, a trip to each city, and then God said, oh, this city, there's no great person here. But he passed by Ontario and or LA and Orange County said, there are five people who are great. And then I want like talking to Gabriel or Michael or anyone else, or Enoch, Moses, and Elijah. Hey, you know that person? You see that person? The world does, does not know anything about that person, but I know. I know that person. And at the judgment seat of Christ, I want to make all you people know how great that person is. What a day that's going to be, right? Instead of this, this Christian was saved 20, 20 years, 30 years, never read the Bible even once, never came to church or came to church once in a while in Easter, Christmas, Independence Day, or what, <laughs> or any time. Didn't, 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 didn't tell anyone of the gospel. Not a great person. You don't, want the, you don't want Jesus Christ to say that about you. You want Jesus Christ 
to compliment you. Yeah. That's the greatest compliment that we could get. It's from Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ might not say you're great, but at least you could just tell Jesus Christ, I did everything that I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And thank you for giving me the opportunity yeah. to serve you. At least that. But if you never done anything for Jesus Christ, you can't even say that. Right? What are you going to do? Just bow, bow, bow in front of Jesus Christ and then just pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, can you please finish this? In the service of Christ? No, you don't want that. The prayer is that each and every one of us, whatever talents that we have, whatever knowledge we have of the Bible, we need to give all those things up to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, and let Jesus Christ work in us to do His will. And if you do that, then maybe God might consider you a great person. It's a rare, it's a rare group because only one woman in the Bible is mentioned as great. It's a very exclusive, very ultra exclusive. But the thing is, you could be part of that group, being a great person.